Well, unless you're a Hollywood stunt person, jumping out of an 11-story building isn't the type of jolt that most people are looking for. And when it comes to stock market volatility, investors are roughly the same. They don't like volatility. They don't like unexpected jolts. And today's ETF battles is a head-to-head -head contest between two ETFs from Invesco and BlackRock that aim to reduce the jolt of market volatility. So which ETF is the better choice? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. We appreciate all of your fantastic battle requests, so keep them coming. But before sending us your matchups, be sure to first double check our Season 3 playlist in the description section below. That will ensure that you don't send us any ETF battle requests for something that we've recently done. Also, don't forget to subscribe to ETF Guide TV, and you can also watch our original programs on Amazon Fire TV and Roku. When it comes to factor investing, ETFs that aim to dampen market volatility are among the biggest and the most popular categories. There's over $40 billion alone invested in volatility minimizing ETFs. And today's matchup is a heavyweight bout between ticker symbols SPLV from Invesco going up against USMV from BlackRock. And these are two of the largest ETFs by assets in the low vol category. And uh, by the way, today's matchup was requested by an anonymous, self-serving homo sapien who I'm not going to reveal the identity other than to say RD is the initials of their name. Judging today's contest is a formidable duo. We've got Shana Sissel with Banrian Capital and John Davey with Astoria Portfolio Advisors. Judges, it's great to see you again. Welcome back. Glad to be here again. Hey, guys. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then our mystery category. For mystery, that's where you, our judges, can choose a certain factor or thing that you feel is critical to today's contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs or opt for a split decision. It's up to them. I've got the scorekeeping chores. And at the end of the show, we will announce an overall winner. Uh, keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's kick things off with Shayna. Sisters before misters, the first category is cost. Shayna, please get us started. Sure. So this is a really interesting one. Neither one of these ETFs are particularly expensive. Uh, SPLV at 25 basis points, USMV at 15 basis points. They're both sizable funds uh, at 10 billion and 28 billion, respectively. Uh, they trade, they're very liquid, they don't have a lot of spread in their trading. Uh, so it really just, uh, at this point, it has to come down just to the numbers. And obviously, USMV is 15 basis points, which is 10 basis points less than SPLV. Uh, and it is is larger at $28 billion. The spread for trade is about the same. It's about three cents. Uh, and uh, so just on that alone, uh, USMV wins this, but neither one of these uh, strategies, neither one of these ETFs are particularly expensive, illiquid, or difficult to trade. So um, it could go either way, but the slight edge goes to USMV. That's a strong start. Thank you, Shana. John, how do you see it when it comes to cost? I don't think I have much more than what Shana said. I mean, she pretty much nailed all the points. So USMV wins. It's a little bit cheaper and both good products. So, But I give the slight edge to USMV. That takes us next to exposure strategy. John, break it down for us. So here I, I would say that USMV would win because, um, you know, we just like the methodology a little bit better. But before I get into that, let me just background is that, you know, we do use USMV in our portfolios. We believe in harvesting a portfolio factor. So things like quality, minval, size, we tend to own a lot of these factors because all the research shows, you know, when you harvest a portfolio factors, you can get higher up on the fish and frontier. So SPLV uses a very simple methodology, just a hundred of the least volatile stocks. So it'll last one year. USMV uses like this M MSCI Barra optimization matrix. It's a little bit more nuanced. I don't think we need to get into nitty gritty, but the, the, the methodology is superior from that standpoint. So I'll give USMV the winner in terms of like, you know, the exposures of, of what it's trying to do. Shana, your turn on exposure strategy. 
Do you agree with John's analysis? I do, but I kind of consider this a tie because there's pros and cons to both. Uh, I think it's important. I am going to go a little nitty gritty on here, John. So, uh, the, you know, one of these funds is Lovol and one of them is Minvol. And I think that's an important distinction. Lovol does not uh, do anything with correlation across the underlying holdings, but Minvol does. There's a uh, cross-correlation aspect to Minval that assures that there's no really strong correlation between their holdings. Uh, so that that's an important distinction, uh, which is in favor of USMB. On the flip side, anytime you're working with a factor like volatility that is somewhat uh, related to momentum and changes to markets where you're at inflection points, there can be major changes. Having more often and more frequent rebalancing is better. And SPLV actually rebalances quarterly while USMV only rebalances semi-annually. So that is a point for SPLV. So all things being equal, I consider this kind of a tie. In the end, they both sort of end up with similar exposures. Neither one of them is particularly concentrated. The top tens are fairly uh, even. Uh, So it, it really comes down to that preference about how often they rebalance, or if you have a preference for minvol versus lovol, where there is a slight nuance there. So to me, it's a tie. Uh, they're, you know, both going to give you the exposure you're looking for to the factor, but they do it in a slightly different way. Performance is the next category. Shana, how do you see it between these two funds? So again, this is really hard. If you look at a today, and I, I took a look at the performance comparison yesterday, um, SPLV is doing better. But a month ago, or two months ago, it was the opposite. Over the time periods, it kind of is all over the place. Um, you know, SPLV has done better more recently, uh, but USMV has slightly better longer term numbers. So Again, I don't, neither one of them stands out to me one way or another. At this point in time, SPLV is doing better. Uh, and, and so for that reason, I give a slight edge to SPLV. John, you're up next. How do you see things in terms of performance between these two ETFs? So we just look at like year to date, you know, one year, three, five, and, and it's split like two, you know, in two instances, you get better at USMV uh, and other, the other two instances, you get better in SPLV. So it's really a tie from my standpoint. Um, there's no like kind of clear winner from like a performance standpoint. It's always going to be subject to like, you know, that period in the marketplace like that, you know, whether it's a, a one year period or if there's a big spike in volatility or whatnot. So I kind of agree with Shanna that it's, it's a wash. That takes us to our mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors that they think is crucial to today's matchup. So, John, what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? I mean, I think, you know, like the market, you know, has spoken in the sense that like $28 billion has been poured into USMV. Uh, that's the current asset of management, whereas SPLV is about $10 billion. So, you know, I give the category winner in terms of mystery, in terms of like what the market actually believes. Like... I think Shannon and I are both saying, like, you know, it's kind of a mix, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, like in the end, like USMV, you know, the, the market speaks for itself in terms of like the existing assets. So, Shana, your turn for your mystery battle category. What is it and who wins it? I am going to go back to something I already referenced, which is that with these types of strategies, more frequent rebalancing is better than less frequent rebalancing. So I uh, have a uh, a nod towards SPLV because it rebalances more frequently. And if we get to an inflection point, uh, it will be able to overcome that uh, more easily than USMV. But it's a slight edge uh, as it pertains to that. Uh, I just personally have a preference for these types of factor models that can change on a dime to have a slightly more frequent rebalancing. How will this ETF battle go down? I don't know. Let's give our judges one final chance to give us their overall battle winner. So Shana, break it down for us. So I'm going to throw out a fund that I think is better than both of these uh, for this exposure. I'm going to Throw in one of my personal favorites, John Davies. He's going to hate me for this because he knows it's coming. He's heard me say it before. Uh, but I'm going to throw BTAL into this as a better alternative than either if you want low vol exposure. 
BTAL is the AGFIQ, U.S. Market Neutral Anti-Beta Fund. It is also taking advantage of the idea that low volatility stocks outperform high volatility stocks, but it's doing it in a way where you can really uh, gain alpha in that it is going long low vol stocks and it's shorting high vol stocks. And if you look at the performance in the one year, I'm going to give you some numbers to knock your socks off because I think it's relevant here. BTAL year to date is up 10.68%. Positive. Yes, folks, positive. On a one year number, it's up 16.51%. Again, positive, folks, positive. If you look at SPLV on a year to date basis, it's down 14.88%. USMV on a year to date basis down 16%. Uh, on a one year, uh, SPLV down 4.4 and USMV down a little over 8%. To me, if I want to play low vol, I like to play low vol on steroids. And in this case, if I think low vol is going to outperform, I want to not only take advantage of it, but I want to short the stuff that I think is going to underperform, which is high vol. And BTAL is the fun to do it, and that is my winner, which was not in the game, but to me, that's the better play. Well, that's a strong wildcard nomination. Thank you, Shana. John, your final chance to weigh in with uh, your overall battle winner, and you can also, of course, nominate a wild card. Uh, give it to us, John. Well, so, you know, full disclosure, we use USMV in our portfolios, so obviously I'm very biased to that. We actually also use BTAL. Uh, which is doing exactly what it's intended to do. In terms of like USMV versus SPLV, like I'm just going to give the overall category winner to USMV. I'm just a little bit more comfortable with the, like the correlation matrix and, you know, just trying to minimize volatility from that standpoint. Um, I think SPLV is a little too simplistic. You know, I kind of agree, like maybe more frequent rebounds is better, but in the end, those correlation matrix use like a very long data set. So, I don't know. I'm just, I'm comfortable with it. We've had it in our portfolios, you know, for many years now. It's one of the factors we harvest. It's big, it's liquid. We believe in MSCI, like we like iShares. So overall, I would say between those two categories, like I would give uh, USMB the edge. Well, our judges have spoken. And according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is a split decision between USMV, which John chose against BTAL, a wildcard choice from Shana. And uh, that wildcard choice, uh, as Shana mentioned, shorts high volatility stocks, while at the same time going long low volatility stocks. Her point was strong. She said, listen, if you want to play this, this area of low vol, do it with steroids. And certainly the historical numbers uh, don't lie, and they have proven uh, that uh, this in this type of environment, it has been a successful strategy thus far. Um, of course, will that continue? Nobody knows. But uh, again, Shana making some strong points. John making his strong arguments in favor of USMV. He liked that particular fund for its exposure strategy, a little bit more uh, sophisticated in his view than just SPLV. Also, he chose it for his mystery battle category, as well as a slight edge in terms of cost over SPLV. Judges, great job with breaking down today's low vol, minimum vol ETF showdown. Well done. Thanks, everyone. Good to see everybody again. Be sure to visit the description section below for research links to our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. You'll also see a section for viewer resources. And uh, which ETF battle would you like to see in our next episode? That's my question to you. Post your ticker symbols in our YouTube comment section below, or you can hit us up on Twitter at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. I'm Ron DeLegge. We'll see you next time.